Hello, my name is Ashley, the Geeky Trained Apprentice, and if you would like to see what I make with these different size diameter pots, some zip ties, and lots of faux plants, this tutorial is going to show you how to make a DIY flower pot wreath with a twist. Let's get crafting. The first thing we need for this craft is a variety of small terracotta pots. These first two sizes I picked up at Dollar Tree and I had about three packages of the larger three and a half inch diameters and I have two packages of the smaller two and a half inch diameters. The reason for the different amount of packages is because the smaller the diameter of the pot, the more come in one package. So when you're planning this, make sure that you have a lot more smaller pots than you do larger ones. I did not go any larger than three and a half because of the wreath form that I chose. You will also see that I picked up a six pack of about a one and a half inch pot. And I do have four thrifted pots in here as well that are different sizes. Now I have seen some flower pot wreaths where they just leave the terracotta as is, but that wasn't very Herbology-esque to me. So we are going to be dry brushing these color paints on. Here you'll see burnt umber, pavement, and just a brown color, followed by a gray. This will make the pots look aged and dirty and like they've been sitting in the greenhouse. If you haven't dry brushed before, it is exactly as it sounds. You need a dry brush. A chippy brush works best. Here you do see me holding a chippy brush, but this was not the one that I was looking for. However, because I was being lazy and didn't want to go back out to get another one, I thought this Dollar Tree brush will be fine. Guys, mistakes were made. As much as I just wanted to get these pots finished, I should have got a different brush because you will see throughout these clips that I have to keep layering on more and more paint. And that was because this brush was so uneven and falling apart as I was using it. The bristles came unglued the brush itself became uneven in certain places. So instead of a light brushing technique, I ended up pretty much painting the entire pot, which is not initially what I had in mind, but I think it worked. So when I say dry brushing on this, that is not really what I ended up with, but I was more concerned about making the pots look dirty and didn't want to just completely get rid of these supplies. One last tip about painting these pots. Make sure you hit the top of the rim as well as the bottom of the pots since there's a possibility they will be seen from every angle on the wreath. And now these pots are ready for our wreath form. This is a 14 inch one I picked up from Michaels. Of course you can make it any size that you would like. And I've seen previous creators use twine to attach these pots to the wreath form. And I just don't have that much faith in my tying abilities. So instead, I'm going to be using different size zip ties. One tip with these zip ties is make sure that you are putting them in the correct way to actually get them zipped because twisting them around once they are on the wreath is exceptionally difficult. So basically, if you put the zip tie on backwards, you make your life harder. Ask me how I know this. However, I do think that for me, the zip tie provides more security than the twine. Now, before you start zip tying anything on, you want to make sure you know where your biggest pieces are going on the wreath first. That will help you with that balance. It's also a lot easier to get an idea with the larger ones than the smaller ones, particularly because the more you start adding on to this wreath, the harder it is to negotiate and move the items on there. Once you have your largest pots on there, you are gonna go from largest to smallest, moving around the entire wreath. One suggestion I have is making sure that zip tie closure is actually on the back of the wreath or all the way down inside the pot. However, I hid any zip ties that I needed with Spanish moss, as you will see. Now, although I loved using the zip ties, I decided this was more of a start than an end because some of these pots really were not as tight as I wanted them to be. Some of them moved entirely or they would slip or I didn't get the angle that I wanted. So I did go in with hot glue 
and glued where needed in order to make this as aesthetically pleasing as I wanted. One more tip I would add is if you are not trying to film this, I would highly recommend doing this and the next two parts outside because all of the materials we are working with are just super messy. Now our pots are ready for the floral film. I cut large Dollar Tree blocks into the smallest chunks that I needed. Initially, I was just placing the floral foam in the pots as is, but some of them started falling out as I was manipulating the wreath. I don't want any of the items that I'm placing on this wreath damaged, so I went back and hot glued all of the floral foam into the pots themselves. This is also when I glued the pots to the wreath, in case you are wondering why some of the pots are still moving. One more note about the floral foam. If you are putting something in there that you know needs more space, like this mandrake that I will be adding to mine, make sure that you are cutting down the floral foam before you glue it in. Our final foundation piece and the messiest part of this project will be adding the Spanish moths. I got these bags from Dollar Tree and I just pulled and cut sections as I needed to. I then applied a large amount of hot glue inside the pot itself and used a silicone applicator to help dab it down. Make sure you are protecting your fingers. The thing that I like about the Spanish moss is that you can cut it down later, so I always tended to apply more than I need than less. It's also very forgiving to work with, both in the sense of making it look the way you want and also hiding what you want. This is how I hid any section that I didn't want people to see, mostly the zip ties, but I also made it overflow some areas and made it the organic greenhouse feel that I wanted before adding any of my final pieces. Now is the fun part. It's time to customize it and make it your own. Are you gonna choose succulents, vegetables, flowers? You could even make this fall themed. Everything will be the same up until this point. I'm giving mine a herbology flair, so you will see some Harry Potter items, including these signs from Litjoy and this mandrake from the Wizarding Trunk. I will also have my own version of the Botuber pus plant that you will see later. Your style is what's going to determine what you look out for as you try and build this wreath. I got the orange flowers on clearance from Joann's. These really pretty succulents I got as a steal from Dollar Tree, particularly before they up their price. And the items I used to make my Botuber pus plant also came from the Dollar Tree. One of the other reasons I wanted to mention this now is Michael's has all of their summer and spring clearance on anywhere from 40 to 70% off. The only items in this wreath that I bought full price for were the specific Harry Potter items. Don't think that you have to go spend a fortune on these fake florals to get what you want or make it look how you want. Just make sure you're really paying attention to those clearance steals. You will also see me adapt these items as I need to. For example, this one did not come with a stem on the end of it, so I added a skewer stick and cut it down to help make it easier. And finally, this is my faux Botuber pus plant. If you would like to see how I made this, I'm going to make an Instagram reel. Please make sure you are following our account down there and I will link it in our description box down below. And if you are wondering what the heck I'm talking about, this is a fictional plant from the world of Harry Potter. And if you squeeze the boils on it, a pus comes out of it. It's particularly known for its acne curing abilities, but it is also known for being painful if you touch it while undiluted. Hermione was actually sent this in an envelope during the fourth year. Once it is decorated to your liking, it is time to create a way to hang it. Of course, I've seen ribbon or rope, but I'm just going to use the zip ties that I have already used because this is a beefy wreath. It is heavy, and as you can see, it is quite difficult to maneuver as well. I also don't feel like I left the proper amount of space for a bow, so instead, I'm going to take two zip ties and create loops like this. So the first one, I'm going to wrap around a big chunk of this wreath so that it doesn't pull through. And then I'm going to create a second smaller loop on the top for hanging. That way it hangs flat. If you are worried about this one showing, again, you could add a decorative item. But if it is placed higher on a door rather than just a lower wreath hanger, 
you will see that it actually hides really well. And now it's time for my favorite part, the finishing shots, you know, after cleaning up all the mess. But seriously, I am so pleased with how this turned out. I kind of had a vague idea and then it just evolved the more pieces I found and the more I started to incorporate Herbology. And I was actually planning on giving this as a gift, but I'm having a really hard time letting go of it. So uh, Gina, will you let me know in the comments, would you want this? If not, I'm totally keeping it. Now where I will actually hang it is future Ashley's problem, but I am so proud of this. Here you're going to see it in a couple of different light sources as well as angles. And the last couple of shots are where it is indoor in artificial light and it is above eye level. I do prefer this. I think it's a lot easier to see the details that I'm loving so much. But you tell me in the comments below, would you make one of these? Would you like to receive them as a gift? And if you would like to continue how to learn to create magic of your own, I will link the DIY Harry Potter playlist as well as we have other creating and crafting videos. Please subscribe and we will see you in our next video.